Now to an incredible find overseas, an elaborate series of stone monuments believed to have been hidden for thousands of years, not far from the famous site of Stonehenge. Some of the stones at Stonehenge weigh between 50 and 70 tons. Some of the stones are even heavier. So how could you have moved these into place? How could you have moved them from Wales, where the blue stones, the spotted dolerite, came from within Stonehenge? Stonehenge, a UNESCO wonder visited by nearly 2 million people annually, remains an enigma. Despite its popularity, much about its purpose and construction eludes us. But what if the key has been hiding in plain sight all along? Recent discoveries hint at a potential extraterrestrial connection, prompting a fresh look at this iconic monument. Around the world, wherever you have megalithic ancient sites, there are local legends that the giants built these places. Stonehenge's construction wasn't a single event, but a remarkable journey spanning millennia. Around 3000 BC, Phase 1 began with a circular ditch and bank, forming a henge structure. The Aubrey Holes, or 56 pits, were located within this earthwork. As we fast forward to 2900 BC, Phase 2 saw the henge's magnificent sarsen circle emerge. These 30 enormous stones, each weighing an incredible 25 tons, are proof of the builder's inventiveness. The story continues with Phase 3, around 2500 BC. Smaller blue stones, believed to have held special cultural significance, were transported from Wales and incorporated into the Sarsen Circle. Finally, Phase 4, around 1500 BC, saw the addition of the iconic Altar Stone, Slaughter Stone, and Heel Stone, elements that many mistakenly believe represent the entirety of Stonehenge. This phased construction underscores the monument's evolving purpose. It wasn't built in one go, but transformed and imbued with meaning over generations. Stonehenge has been the site of a number of UFO encounters over the years. The next part of this exploration delves into the alien connection, potentially hidden within these very stages of construction. Get ready to venture beyond the tourist trail and into the realm of the extraordinary. Stonehenge, a prehistoric monument shrouded in mystery, stands on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England. This iconic landmark, roughly two miles west of Amesbury, consists of a circular arrangement of massive sarsen stones, a type of sandstone. These giants, reaching 13 feet tall and weighing 25 tons each, are capped by horizontal lintels that connect them. Inside this outer ring lies a circle of smaller blue stones, with even more central freestanding trilithons, two sturdy vertical sarsen stones topped by a single lintel. Stonehenge's precise alignment with the summer and winter solstices is evident, despite its largely destroyed state. The whole monument is enclosed by earthworks, which date to approximately 3100 BC and consist of a circular ditch and bank. It is thought that this earthwork represents the beginning of the building process. Over the last century, archaeologists have pieced together Stonehenge's story. The initial phase saw the creation of the circular earthwork, involving a ditch dug into the ground and a surrounding bank formed using the excavated soil. This enclosed the area where the monument would later rise. Radiocarbon dating suggests the presence of some blue stones, volcanic rock, at the site as early as 3000 BC. These are believed to have been transported over 150 miles from the Preseli Hills in Wales. The most iconic sarsen stones likely arrived during a later phase, hauled from the Marlborough Downs roughly 20 miles north. Shaped and arranged in a circle with connecting lintels, they formed the characteristic trilithons and outer rings. Further dating shows the blue stones were repositioned within the monument during this period, Originally thought to be in a double circle, they were reorganized into the smaller circle and horseshoe arrangement we see today. There's more to Stonehenge's history than that. The evidence points to centuries of continuous use and adaptation. It is possible that more stones were added or altered during the Late Bronze Age, around 1600 BC, when the last significant alterations occurred. The mysterious prehistoric structure on Salisbury Plain in England, known as Stonehenge, was officially protected in 1882 
and was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1986. In addition to raising its visibility internationally, this acknowledgement paved the way for more in-depth research into its mysteries. The altar stone's provenance has been the subject of fascinating new research. This revelation challenges long-held beliefs about the monument's central stones. Previously, it was assumed that all the stones in the inner circle, including the altar stone, originated from the Preseli region in West Wales. This theory stemmed from a century-old study by British geologist Herbert Henry Thomas. While Thomas accurately identified the source of some inner circle stones, recent research led by Professor Richard Bevins of Aberystwyth University throws a wrench into the works. According to the latest research, the altar stone probably originated far further north in Britain, which is a completely different story. The size and type of granite of the altar stone are the two most important factors that led to this conclusion. The combination of its towering height and unusual makeup makes it stand out in the neighborhood. This disparity has prompted a re-evaluation of the stone's history and its connection to the overall site. The lack of archaeological evidence for the altar stone's arrival at Stonehenge raises the possibility that it was brought to the site much later, challenging the assumption that it was part of the original construction. Archaeologists have carried out a thorough comparison analysis to identify the source. They examined the altar stone's geochemistry and mineralogy, comparing it to more than 50 possible source locations spread across a wide region that included Western England and South Wales. Despite intensive efforts, these investigations haven't given a conclusive solution. The altar stone's unique geological signature doesn't match any known site examined in the study. To further complicate matters, the stone contains an unusually high level of barium, a feature absent from other known sources. This adds another layer of difficulty to identifying its origin. The mystery doesn't end there. Recent research conducted by a consortium of universities and historic England has shifted the focus beyond Stonehenge itself. Advanced geophysical techniques have revealed significant insights into the surrounding area. For centuries, our attention has been solely on the monument, overlooking the potential significance of its immediate environment. Perhaps the key to understanding Stonehenge lies not just within its stones, but also in the landscape that cradles it. The story of Stonehenge takes an unexpected turn as researchers delve deeper into the surrounding landscape. Utilizing advanced geophysical techniques, they've identified not just the previously known North Barrow, but a network of up to 12 smaller circular or oval enclosures. These intriguing features share a key characteristic with Stonehenge itself, surrounding ditches and external earth banks. Many of these enclosures incorporate circles formed by upright posts, leading archaeologists to classify them as henges. This term, inspired by Stonehenge, signifies a shared architectural style and suggests a broader ritualistic landscape surrounding the iconic monument, though its circular shape and possible connection to upright poles suggest religious or ceremonial functions. The exact purpose of these henges is yet unknown. While the specific rituals conducted within them are unknown, they undoubtedly served as hubs of spiritual activity in the ancient world. However, a darker side might also be present. In 1953, Professor Richard Atkinson made a startling discovery while studying Stonehenge. He noticed carvings of an early Bronze Age dagger and axe head on one of the upright sarsen stones. Incredibly, these carvings were present in early photographs of the monument but had gone unnoticed. Following Atkinson's first discoveries, other carvings were subsequently found throughout the years. By 2005, a total of three daggers and 44 axe heads had been identified. These sculptures, displaying unusual designs like weapons used during the early Bronze Age, 1750-1500 BC, offer intriguing questions. Most importantly, the carvings were made roughly 1,000 years after the stones were erected at Stonehenge. This implies a later cultural and ceremonial activity where the builders chose to embellish the existing stones. Did they intend to connect the monument with past warfare or violence? To dive deeper into this riddle, 
Historic England commissioned a high-resolution laser scan of the stones. This cutting-edge technology revealed a stunning number of previously undiscovered engravings, 71 extra axe heads, and one possible new dagger. This amazing discovery effectively doubled the known number of early Bronze Age axe head engravings in all of Britain. Could these weapon depictions hint at a darker purpose for Stonehenge beyond peaceful worship? The presence of an Anglo-Saxon skeleton, unearthed in a shallow grave just outside the stone circle, adds another layer to the puzzle. This young man, believed to have met a violent end through decapitation, raises questions about potential conflicts or sacrifices associated with the site. While the skeleton was unfortunately lost during World War II, its rediscovery in the 1980s allowed for crucial analysis. Radiocarbon dating confirmed that the tragic event occurred around the same time as the axe head carvings, suggesting a possible link. The Stonehenge mythology keeps changing. An increasingly intricate and maybe unnerving picture appears as we examine the carvings on the stones and the surrounding terrain. Stonehenge was a place of worship only, or did it also record a more violent past? Recent discoveries have shed light on the people who were laid to rest at this sacred site, offering a glimpse into their lives, deaths, and the evolving burial practices associated with Stonehenge. The Aubrey Holes, a circle of pits surrounding the monument, proved to be a treasure trove of cremated human remains. These remains weren't simply deposited at the site. The archaeological record reveals a fascinating shift in burial practices over five centuries, from 3000 to 2500 BC. At first, cremated remains were positioned next to or inside the Aubrey Holes, maybe identifying certain people with specific stones in the monument. This individualized approach raises the possibility of a close bond between the departed and the location. However, later cremations were scattered within the peripheral ditch surrounding Stonehenge. This shift indicates a move towards a broader connection with long-dead ancestors, rather than focusing on specific individuals. William Hawley, an archaeologist working in the 1920s, excavated many of these cremation deposits. But a 2008 re-excavation showed that Hawley's techniques weren't as exacting as first assumed. The remains he collected from the Aubrey holes were extensively commingled, suggesting multiple deposits from single cremations and a lack of standardized deposition techniques. Despite these challenges, the re-excavation of Aubrey Hole 7 unearthed a remarkable find, an intact cremation burial of an adult woman. Radiocarbon dating placed this burial at around 3900-2900 Cal BC. This finding emphasizes how unfinished Hawley's work was and raises the prospect that there are more complete burials just waiting to be found. Examining the recovered bone fragments revealed details about the ages and identities of those buried at Stonehenge. The analysis identified a minimum of 22 adults and 5 sub-adults. Interestingly, the ratio of adults to sub-adults was 4.41. This contrasts with typical mortality patterns in pre-industrial societies where child mortality rates are generally higher. This suggests a potential preference for burying adults at Stonehenge, possibly excluding children or infants. This practice differed from earlier Neolithic burial practices observed in Britain. Variations in burial customs around the site are hinted at by the disparity between the number of cremated burials documented by Hawley and the discovered bone pieces. Estimates of the total number of cremated burials at Stonehenge range from 150 to 240. While the exact number remains unclear, it's staggering to think that so many people were laid to rest here over centuries. However, the story of Stonehenge extends beyond its human inhabitants. The very stones that make up this monument hold their mysteries. Two distinct types of stone were used in its construction, the massive sarsen stones forming the outer circle and the smaller blue stones found within. The sarsen stones, weighing an astounding 25 tons each, were quarried from the Marlborough Downs, nearly 20 miles away. Historians believe these behemoths were brought to the site using sleds and ropes, a feat that would have required hundreds of people, maybe more, depending on the terrain. The blue stones, 
composed of a different type of rock known as dolerite, originate from the Preseli Hills in Wales, a distance of over 150 miles. These smaller stones, weighing between two and five tons each, pose an even greater logistical puzzle. Theories suggest they might have been transported by a combination of water and overland dragging, but the details remain elusive. The seemingly random selection of stones from such far-flung places only serves to deepen the mystery. Why were these specific stones chosen? How were they transported across such vast distances? Various theories abound, with some suggesting glaciers might have played a role in moving the stones, while others propose a more human-centric explanation involving rivers as a potential transportation route. For now, the most plausible theory suggests the stones were moved overland by human muscle, but concrete evidence to support this remains elusive. Despite the gaps in our knowledge, the story of Stonehenge continues to unfold as we delve deeper into the secrets buried within its human remains and the mysteries surrounding its construction materials. A clearer picture of this remarkable monument and its place in history is slowly emerging. Stonehenge's connection to astronomy is undeniable. The monument's layout and positioning appear meticulously planned to align with the sun's movements during key celestial events, particularly the solstices. During the summer solstice, the rising sun appears perfectly aligned with the heel stone, a large marker just outside the main circle. This visually striking effect creates a powerful symbol, potentially marking the start of summer. Similarly, the winter solstice witnesses the sunset aligned with Stonehenge's axis, marking the shortest day of the year. This alignment might have held deep cultural or practical significance, signifying the onset of winter or the gradual return of daylight. These deliberate alignments showcase an advanced understanding of the sun's annual path across the sky. The builder's intentionality suggests that Stonehenge served a purpose beyond mere construction. Theories abound, with possibilities ranging from an astronomical observatory to a calendar. Understanding and marking these celestial events would have been crucial for ancient societies, aiding in agricultural planning, religious rituals, or cultural ceremonies tied to the changing seasons. It might have served as a physical calendar, helping people keep track of the year's progression. However, a shroud of mystery surrounds Stonehenge's origins due to the absence of written records from its creation period. The culture responsible left no such documentation, leaving us without direct insights into the why and how of Stonehenge. The first known written allusions arose in medieval writings about 1130 AD, a huge gap that makes understanding the monument's original purpose extremely problematic. This lack of written records forces archaeologists to rely on interpretations based on archaeological evidence, including the monument's layout and celestial alignments. As a result, a multitude of theories have emerged. Some believe Stonehenge served as a place for healing or funeral rites, a religious or ceremonial center, or even an astronomical observatory. Each idea has merit, underscoring the challenge of determining the precise cause of Stonehenge's construction. What draws us to this amazing monument, a quiet sentinel whispering secrets from a bygone era, is precisely this mystery. Stonehenge stands as a tribute to human creativity, predating even the awe-inspiring pyramids of Giza. Unlike the pyramids, however, Stonehenge has no written record to explain its purpose or origins. This exact paucity of documentation drives the monument's enduring mystery and encourages us to put together its tale through the pieces left behind. Remarkably, Stonehenge is estimated to be at least 9,000 years old, making it one of the oldest man-made structures on Earth. This vast age adds another layer to the enigma, how could such a complex monument be built in a time so far removed from our own? There are further barriers to understanding Stonehenge besides the absence of written documents. The monument has been mentioned for thousands of years. The earliest records were from medieval manuscripts and date to approximately 1130 AD. 
it is extremely difficult to close the knowledge gap between the monument's establishment and any recorded historical understanding of its function because of this huge lapse of time. However, advancements in scientific techniques are slowly chipping away at the mystery. Recent breakthroughs have helped trace some of the stones used in Stonehenge to a specific area in West Woods, Wiltshire. This newfound knowledge about the stone's geographical origins sheds light on the logistics and planning involved in constructing the monument. One intriguing idea put out by researcher Stephen Waller explores the world of auditory illusions. Waller speculates that the arrangement of the monument may have been motivated by a particular sonic phenomenon. His experiments entailed strategically arranging musical instruments to generate alternating zones of loud and quiet sound waves. As he went around these devices, the sound loudness changed due to wave interference. Notably, within the silent zones, he felt a sense of peace and isolation from the loudness. To further investigate this topic, Waller blindfolded volunteers and asked them to sketch their perceptions of the sound source. Interestingly, numerous participants sketched circles of pillars similar to Stonehenge's structure. One volunteer even sketched lentils, a characteristic aspect of the monument. At While the surge in interest prompted a thorough exploration of a known tomb called the Water Shaft in 1999, nothing resembling Casey's description materialized. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the search for the Hall of Records continues. Several organizations have spear investigations at the Giza Plateau. In 1978, the Association for Research and Enlightenment, ARE, collaborated with SRI International to explore potential chambers beneath the Sphinx's bedrock. Ground-penetrating radar hinted at anomalies near the pause, but subsequent drilling revealed only natural cracks in the rock. In 1991, the ARE sent Joseph Schumacher to join a geological survey led by Robert Schoch. They aimed to test Schoch's theory that water erosion suggested the Sphinx was far older than previously believed. During the survey, geophysicist Thomas Dobecki proposed that seismic data indicated a potentially man-made chamber beneath the right paw. These findings were featured in a 1993 documentary, further fueling speculation. However, these claims were met with strong opposition from the scientific community. Egyptologists and geologists pointed out inconsistencies in the data and the lack of physical evidence. They emphasized the natural process responsible for the Sphinx's weathering and the established timeline for its construction during the reign of Khafre, 2558-2532 BC. The allure of the Great Sphinx lies not just in its physical magnificence, but also in the captivating blend of history, myth, and ongoing scientific inquiry. While the search for the Hall of Records continues to... The debate between Waller and Darville underscores the complexity of understanding Stonehenge. The monument likely served multiple purposes, and acoustics might have been one facet of a richer tapestry of uses. Stonehenge continues to hold its secrets close, but with each scientific advancement and archaeological discovery, we inch closer to unraveling its story. From its remarkable age to the intriguing theory of auditory inspiration, it is a reminder of the enduring power of human curiosity and our relentless pursuit of understanding the past. Salisbury Plain, a wide region of nearly 300 square miles in southern England is a treasure trove of history and archaeology. Its distinctive chalky terrain sets it apart geologically and contributes significantly to its archaeological richness. This vast area boasts a deep and diverse history, predating even the construction of Stonehenge. Evidence suggests continuous human activity and cultural practices dating back to prehistoric times. The diverse array of prehistoric sites, ancient monuments, and artifacts unearthed within its boundaries paints a vivid picture of the lives, rituals, and societal structures of past civilizations. Beyond the iconic Stonehenge monument, Salisbury Plain reveals numerous traces of human life. 
burial mounds, settlements, religious structures, and ceremonial sites. This landscape served as a canvas for generations, showcasing the evolution of societies and cultures over millennia. Geology of the Chalk Plateau has played a crucial role in preserving these archaeological remains. This allows researchers and archaeologists to uncover valuable information about ancient human civilizations, their customs, and their connection to the land. Even before Stonehenge was built, there were indications of the area's sacred significance. Three colossal timber pillars are believed to be around 10,000 years old. These pillars highlight the area's spiritual importance long before the iconic stone monument was erected. In 2014, a groundbreaking four-year scientific investigation revolutionized our understanding of Salisbury Plain's archaeological landscape. Researchers employed a suite of cutting-edge technologies to peer beneath the surface without disturbing the land. Ground-penetrating radar, GPR, played a significant role. It employs radar pulses to identify subsurface structures or differences in materials like stone, soil, or voids. By studying the reflected signals, specialists can map subsurface structures and abnormalities, perhaps exposing hidden secrets. Another crucial tool was light detection and ranging, LIDAR. This remote sensing method utilizes laser light to measure distances to the Earth's surface. Mounted on aircraft or drones, LIDAR instruments create highly detailed three-dimensional maps or models of the terrain. These maps reveal subtle surface features that might otherwise be obscured by vegetation or other obstacles. Magnetometers were also employed. These instruments detect variations in the Earth's magnetic field caused by buried structures. They are particularly useful in identifying archaeological features made of magnetic materials like stone or fired clay, which can cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field. Finally, Electrical Resistivity Tomography ERT, offered valuable insights. ERT involves transmitting electrical currents into the ground and measuring the resistance encountered. Variations in soil or sediment composition affect the electrical conductivity, revealing buried structures or areas with different material properties. Archaeological discovery has benefited much from the combined application of these non-invasive techniques, especially GPR, LIDAR, and magnetometry. These technologies provide detailed images, maps, and data that help identify and analyze buried features without excavation. These groundbreaking finds made clear an amazing fact. Stonehenge was only one part of a huge network of holy sites, not an isolated entity. These shrines and historic buildings create an image of a complex and culturally diverse religious setting. It emphasizes the great spiritual importance of Salisbury Plain, which goes beyond and before the well-known Stonehenge monument. On the surface, Stonehenge emanates its own kind of mystery. However, the farther we get into its story, the more convoluted and fascinating it becomes. Unearthed relics have provided insight on the monument's lengthy and complex history, indicating the various people that engaged with it over millennia. Archaeologists unearthed pendants, beads, and fossils at the Willsford G8 Barrow, which dates back nearly 4,000 years. These Bronze Age riches provide insight on the time period's burial rituals and material culture. Objects interred with a lady demonstrate an unexpected level of craftsmanship and technological sophistication. The techniques utilized in their fabrication demonstrate the extraordinary abilities and creativity of these ancient craftspeople. The discovery of Roman coins near Stonehenge suggests that the site continued to hold significance long after its initial construction. These coins imply that the monument might have held a particular meaning for the Romans as well. Perhaps it served as a point of cultural interest or pilgrimage during their era. Unearthing pottery, stone, and even gold objects from the medieval period further cements the notion of Stonehenge's enduring allure. 
These artifacts offer evidence of human activity and interaction with the site throughout history. They shed light on the evolving nature of Stonehenge's use and significance, reflecting the cultural, social, and economic dynamics of the medieval era. However, these discoveries also add another layer to the enigmatic nature of Stonehenge. Could there be a connection to aliens, as some have proposed? The precision and alignment of the stones at Stonehenge are undeniably impressive. Some argue that such an achievement would have been beyond the capabilities of ancient humans, given the limitations of their technology. They point to the massive stones, some weighing several tons, and question how they could have been moved and positioned without advanced machinery or assistance from beings with superior knowledge. The absence of definitive records or detailed explanations about Stonehenge's construction fuels speculation. Some argue that ancient civilizations could not have built such structures on their own and consequently credit alien influence without a clear historical record. The specific reason for Stonehenge, the exact techniques for moving and erecting the stones, and the meaning behind its architecture are still mostly unknown. Unquestionably, this absence of specific solutions prompts others to put forward strange theories, such as alien participation. But the question remains, was Stonehenge solely the work of ancient human ingenuity, or did they have some unknown help? Like so much about Stonehenge, the solution might never be known, which is evidence of the monument's lasting influence. Analysis of the decapitated skeleton unearthed at Stonehenge places the execution between 660 and 890 AD. This raises a startling question. Has Stonehenge's purpose been misunderstood? Could it have served as a location for executions, with the standing stones symbolizing lives taken? If this theory holds weight, it opens a Pandora's box of new questions. When did these executions cease? How could such a violent chapter in Stonehenge's history be completely forgotten? This discovery compels us to reevaluate the monument's significance. Perhaps Stonehenge wasn't solely a place of awe and mystery, but also a stage for a darker past. The answers to these questions may lie buried deep within the secrets of Stonehenge, waiting to be unearthed. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel to see more. We'll see you in the next one.